All right. I'm about to hop on in a minute. I just want y'all to soak this in. Game Kings 2, the definition of a man. There go the link. For those of you that want to purchase the Game Kings 2 seminar that took place in New York City, the link is right there. Go ahead and soak that in for just a moment. We're about to get it going. Right. Go ahead, gentlemen. Get ready to make this happen. Soak it in a little bit. Soak it in a little bit. Yeah. Get that. Get that. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Give me just a moment. Let's take that off. Let's throw that on. Yeah. Let's do something with the music. All right, here we go. So, you know, y'all saw the thumbnail. Are you a hopeless romantic? You know, for those of you who really rock with me, right? My earlier videos, I talked about that. I talked about guys being hopeless romantics. In fact, it's my personal belief that many of these red pill guys are recovering hopeless romantics. Yeah, this is the intervention for you niggas. Recovering hopeless romantics. Now, let me plug the joint right quick. When you fall in love with women instead of falling into some respect, this happens. Now, I'm about to share with you a video, I came across this video earlier. I went ahead and clipped it. I'm about to share that shit with you guys in just a moment. I'm about to break it down. Line by line, we're going to break this shit down. And what I want guys to get from this, stop thinking like women. All that falling in love shit, twin flame shit, soulmate shit, real love, true love, all that goofy shit. To me, it's goofy. Now, just love for the sake of loving and caring for somebody, nothing wrong with it. I support it. I support it. In fact, let me go ahead and the Game Kings 2. Like that. There you go. There you go. Game Kings 2. So, real quick, here's my, here's my caveat. There is nothing wrong with love in and of itself. It's when you romanticize love. That's where the issue comes in at. It's when you romanticize love, right? So when we talk about a hopeless romantic, okay, here we go. So hold on real quick. I'm about to show y'all something. All right, hold on. Give me a moment, gentlemen. I'm about to go ahead and break this shit down today. All right, here we go. So, a hopeless romantic. Hold on, gentlemen. Give me a second. 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 There we go. A hopeless romantic is someone who loves the idea of being in love and tends to think of love as having fairy tale qualities. <clears throat> a lot of the guys who talk about body count, this this is similar to how they think. They live in a fairy tale world right? They might strongly believe in the idea of love at first sight. I've literally had guys or heard guys say that goofy shit. And that, <laughs> and that there is one perfect partner out there for them who will appear one day and sweep them off their feet. We live in a world where men want to be swept off their feet by women. We live in a world where guys are looking for their forever girl. That's what guys want. A lot of guys want that. We got to be honest. Now, here's the thing, right? I don't believe in falling in love with women. I believe that that's something that women should concern themselves with. Us men fall into some damn respect. 
the root cause, gentlemen, of all your problems with women, especially for you guys who are endeavoring to be in a relationship, is not a lack of a woman loving you. That's not your fucking problem. Your problem is you're dealing with women who don't respect you. And when I play this little clip, you're going to see what I mean. You're going to see what I mean. Because guys live in this world, in this delusional world, where if they can somehow find a woman to fall in love with and, and have this happily ever after approach to life when dealing with women, that all the things that befall other people, all the things that happen to other less fortunate people who aren't in love, they can escape or sidestep. Nah, bruh. So let's go ahead and get this. Hold on, give me a second, gentlemen. We are gonna get this popping. Yeah, we're going to get this popping. Now, the, well, the volume might be a tad low, so hopefully, hopefully we can, we can, we can hear it. Let's go. Is this a message to the young lady that literally just broke up with me? I don't want you out there painting that narrative talking about I never loved you because I called you so, so very hard now, but I want you to realize that you hurt me. I do apologize for calling you the names, but do you really hurt me? Okay, let's stop right there. In the words of Mr. 1950, this is real vaginal. It's already starting out that way. This is some bitch assness. What is, what is he saying? I just want you to know you really hurt me. First and foremost, I don't know what it is with these modern males where they feel a need to go online with all their grievances when it comes to women. Guys post everything. You got guys doing videos when chicks fly out and don't want to smash. You got guys doing videos when they take a woman to dinner and she don't want to smash. <clears throat> you got guys doing videos where they're getting rejected by chicks. You got guys doing videos where they're arguing with, with women. Guys want to record every situation that that they feel is, is, I guess, hurtful to them or bothersome or troublesome to them. They want to record all these different things and it all centers around women. Like even these guys that do these public marriage proposals and they get rejected. I don't know what it is with you modern males that want to record every fucking thing. Like even this shit right here, what he's doing, what he's really doing, he's making an emotional plea to get her back. That's what he's really doing. But let's go. Like when I first met you seven months ago, I knew I met my wife. You had a son. He said he met her seven months ago. Seven months ago. And he knew that he met his wife. Let's go. Like when I first seen you, you were one of the most beautiful women I ever seen in my life. And like, as soon as I met you, start talking to you, I knew this is what love was. It's been a long time in my life where I felt like that before. And you made me feel complete. With he said, you made me feel complete. That's what he said. You made me feel complete. Not only that, but he said he knew. He knew he loved her. What did I say hopeless romantics were? Love at first sight, niggas. And even if they're not love at first sight, they will literally have an interaction with a woman for a week or two. And they feel like they in love. Sucker for love ass, tender dick ass niggas. Man, let's go. My daughter and your son. I love your son. Like, like, you was my son. And today. Stop the cap. You've known this woman for seven months and you loved her son. Like he, you, you see what I'm saying? These hopeless romantic types who seem to romanticize things and idealize love. You, you mean to tell me you met this little boy who you're not related to due to Duke coming into the picture after the stepfather then stepped out. And in, in, in less than seven months, 
you started loving this little boy like your own child. Stop the cap. Let's go. I just felt like my whole life was ripped apart. Like, you let people disrespect me. Not once have I disrespected you. He said his whole life was ripped apart. I don't care if they were together for 17 years or 27 years, but seven months, seven months. Look, you can see the tear on his face. Look at the tear. Look at this bearded ass Negro with a tear on his cheek. Talking about my whole life was ripped apart. Let's go. Ever since I started expressing my feelings about how, how I felt and how you made me feel. All of a sudden, I was the problem. I don't care about that. I just wanted you to see that Stop you... Stop right there. Okay? He said something that all you men need to pay attention to. He said, ever since I started expressing my feelings about how I felt, how I felt about you, I was the problem. Let me tell you something. All women will tell you that they do want to be loved and cared for and cared about by a man that they care about. Now, now, peep what I just said, because that's that's the key, that's the key thing. All women, okay, they want to be loved and cared about by a man that they care about. But what women don't want, they don't want no sappy shit. Okay, even if it's from a dude they care about, they don't want no sappy, you holding that hand. I love you so much. Oh, my life is so complete. Because that's what he said. My life is complete. In seven months, you met this woman who completes you. And you and you fell in love with the son. Hold on, gentlemen. This camera be bugging sometimes. And you fell in love with the son. Hold on. Give me a second. Motherfucker tripping. Hold on. Okay, my bad. So <laughs> women don't want that sappy shit, right? They don't want that type of shit. They still want a strong, masculine, dominant, authoritative, aggressive, assertive man who is vulnerable enough to, to show that he cares, but not so vulnerable that he sound like a woman when he speaks. Let's go. He said he wants to be treated like a man. I got some bad news for a lot of you dudes, man. We're not all created equal. We're not all men. Now, when it comes to our gender, I mean, we're all males. And, and once we reach a certain age, we become adult males, grown adult males. But when you talk about what separates a grown adult male from a man, your behaviors, how you act, has nothing to do with how you look, how muscular, how tall you are, how big your dick is, how many women you had sex with, how much money you made, how educated you are. None of those things have anything to do with manhood. Not a, not a goddamn one of them. How do you conduct yourself? What type of man are you? What Do you have standards, principles, integrity, honor, dignity? Do you stand on who the fuck you are? Are you authentic? Do you always represent yourself in public and in private to the fullest? Do you stand on something? Do you stand for something? Is there something in your life that you're willing to kill for? Is there something in your life that you're willing to die for? If not, you ain't no fucking man. And this dude, he he's, he's not a man to me. Look at this nigga. Look at the tears on his fucking cheek. Let's go. Like, I, I love you with every bone of my body. 
against the feet that I never thought I'd do for another woman. I felt things about you that I never felt about any other woman in my life. And like, I, the only thing that I ever wanted in my life was to have a family. This is your second time breaking up with me the first time is because I love Caught that? This is her second time breaking up with this dude. Seven months. So let, let's 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 break this down. <clears throat> so in seven months of knowing this woman, you're in love with her. You want to marry her and spend the rest of your life with her. You love her son like he's your own. She completes you. All you ever wanted to do was feel like a man. She breaks up what you want. What did I tell y'all? Okay, this is very important. I'm gonna give you some game right here. And this is his problem. He needs to come holler at me. I tell you guys, stop recycling women. When a relationship is over, look, let me tell y'all motherfuckers something. Don't listen to these YouTubers talking about getting your girl back or 10 ways to get her back. Fuck all that. Don't listen to none of that shit. Let me explain something to you that a lot of these motherfuckers don't say. Here is the problem with getting back in a relationship with someone after it ends, especially if it ends and it's not amicable. But more specifically, if it ends and there was any type of toxicity or drama or disrespect going on, you can never rekindle the flame with that chick. Never. Here is the problem. When y'all break up, I don't care if it's a month, if it's a year, if it's two years or whatever the case may be. If y'all get back together, she will never look at you as a new person. She will look at you as the old you. Meaning, whatever she thought about you, whatever she felt about you, that's the way she still views you. Her view of you won't change. So if she thinks you are a groveling, sniveling little bitch, she's going to think the same way about you. A lot of times when these women get back with you, it's not because they love you and miss you and they want to try it again. It's because the dudes that's, that's fucking them crazy, right, that's really dicking them down, the dudes they really want don't want to be in a relationship with them. And because they want to be in a relationship, they'll come back to you because they know you're sitting there waiting. Let's go. I should have saw the signs that you probably didn't feel that way from the beginning. But listen to what he says. Feel that way about me, but I don't want you out here painting this narrative. Like, oh, hold on, let's back I, it up. Let's back it up. But I thought that I can make you feel that way about me, but I don't want Stop. you. Stop. Repeat what he said. So he knew. He saw signs. That whatever type of love he wanted her to reciprocate, he knew it wasn't there. And what did he think he could do? He thought he could make her feel a certain way about him. This is what guys do. This is a mistake that hopeless romantics make, beta males make, simps make. They think if I shower her with love, if I show her that I care, if I spoil her, if I pedestalize her, if I dote on her, if I make accommodations, if I appease her, if I pacify, if I acquiesce to her needs, wants, and desires, she'll love me for it. No, she won't, nigga. Let's go. Oh, you're painting this narrative like I never loved you because my whole idea was love you. All I wanted to do was just I gotta stop it. This nigga's a bitch. This is this is this is pathetic. This is some weak ass shit. And I know some of y'all might be listening, man. Come on, K man, have some compassion. No, I have no sympathy for this nigga. 
I have no empathy for this nigga. I have no compassion. I have no consideration or thoughtfulness for this nigga's feelings or the state of where he's at. You a motherfucking man acting like this. Grown ass nigga. Look at this nigga. And then he got the nerve to put this shit on the internet. Use a bitch. Shout out, Mr. 1950. Let's go. <coughs> I just want you to hurt the way that you hurt me. Did y'all hear what he said? He said, I just want you to hurt. The way that you hurt me. See, here, here's the thing, right? When you're in a relationship, or even if you're not in a relationship, if you're dating a woman who don't really feel you like that, she don't really care for you like that, if you start trying to shame her for shit or calling her out of her name and talking to her crazy, that's not going to hurt her feelings. Okay, What it's going to do is it's going to confirm and validate that you's the bitch she always thought you were. You're just confirming something she already believed. And now she's looking at you in disgust and, and disdain. Like, look at this motherfucker. Look at this motherfucking bitch of, bitch of a man. Look at him act like this. Look at this. This nigga then took off his glasses because this shit is all foggy from him crying. And let's go. See, he started talking about all I ever wanted was a family, and he mentioned her son and his daughter. He already has a family, him and his son. Him and you don't need you don't you don't need to be in a household with a woman up under the same roof with a kid or a couple of kids to have a family. You can be a single father raising your child or children. That's your fucking family. You don't need a woman to come into the picture to complete you. Okay, whether you are childless or not, this notion that family can only be, oh, this traditional situation where there's a man, woman, and some fucking kids. No, you and your son, y'all are family. Let's go. Yeah, this is what you probably wish I felt. Nah, I feel like the world. But if I find this nigga for you, maybe you can hook up with this nigga. This is the type of nigga you need. Like, <laughs> I'm Y'all got to forgive the background noise. I guess when I was re because I, I clipped it. I guess when I was clipping it, I was talking. So it caught some of what I said. So let me go ahead and plug the joint, man. When you fall in love with women instead of falling into some respect, this happens. I just want guys to understand. No woman is worth crying over. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's just my personal opinion because I ain't never cried over no woman, right? And, and let me just say this for anyone that, that don't understand. I have the capacity to love women, but I just love myself more. I don't believe in that falling in love shit, okay? I prefer the word adore. Girl, I adore you, which means respect and love. Just like I love when women show me deference, which is humble submission and respect. I have adored women in my life. <clears throat> but I'm not attached to them. Okay, I've often said I'm the easiest guy to break up with. It don't matter how much I care for the woman. Okay, it doesn't mean that I don't feel disappointment. 
I felt my share of disappointment, but I'm a realist. I know that shit ends. I know that the merry-go-round don't keep spinning. Sometimes it slows down, motherfuckers want to hop off. And sometimes it slows down so somebody else can hop on. Okay, that's life. Again, you can feel your disappointment. Hold on. You can feel your disappointment, but your life is not over because a woman wants to exit from it. It's not over. I don't care if you're married and you've been married for 20, 30 years. Now, I know for, for guys who probably been in a relationship that long, all you know is being a husband to this woman. That's that's your life. To me, you know, me being married or when I was married or having a relationship, that's a part of my life. That's not my life. Okay, me being the individual person that I am, Carrie, this is who I am. So wherever I go, there I am. So, so if a person wants to be a part of my life or not, my life, excuse me, my life is not incomplete because somebody left. My life is not destroyed because somebody left. My life is not fucked up and uprooted because somebody left. Nigga, I keep on moving. I don't stop. I don't stop for nobody. I keep right on pushing. It's life. You know what I'm saying? I tell guys all the time, whenever your chick bounce or she want to leave you, give yourself about 48 hours, two days. You know what I'm saying? Sit with your thoughts. Sit with your feelings. And I'm about to get on, on that shit in a minute when we talk about feelings. But sit with your thoughts and sit with your feelings for about two days. Right? And get past that shit. Like, I'm the type of person, when a relationship ends, I don't be calling up my boys complaining about that shit. Okay? And I talked about this on the live stream. Shit. Uh, well, niggas gonna be asking me, yeah, man, we got this get together going on. Yeah, man, you should bring your girl. Oh man, we ain't together no more, player. Nigga, when y'all when y'all break up, nigga? Oh y'all divorcing? What? Oh yeah, nigga, this been going on for like a month or two, nigga. This... Nigga, you didn't say nothing to nobody, no, nigga. I'm just nigga, you just living your life, ain't saying nothing to nobody. I'm just living my life, ain't saying nothing to nobody, cause that's what the fuck I do. I, I don't need to bend a nigga's ear, right? I don't need to vent to niggas about my shit. You know what I'm saying? I figured it out on my own when I got into it. I figured out on my own when the shit is over. I'm oh, before I before I leave, let's talk about these feelings. Stop acting like women. Okay, women are the ones who are chaotic. Women are the ones who are mainly motivated to 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 do certain things based on their feelings and their emotions cuz women are governed by their feelings and their emotions. It doesn't mean they can't be practical, but all in all, women are governed by their feelings and emotions. That's why women do shit that guys don't understand. Man, why the fuck she do that goofy shit? Feelings and emotions. She was motivated by her feelings and emotions to do that and to say that, and it don't make sense to you because you think more logically, right? You're more pragmatic and practical with your thought process. The problem with a lot of guys when you are endeavoring to get into a relationship or to get married and all that type of shit, your feelings and emotions should be on a back burner. At the forefront of your decision making should be thinking about the pros and cons of the situation, being logical, practical, looking at things with a pragmatic mindset. Does this make sense? Fuck my feelings. Okay, How she looks shouldn't factor into the equation. Sex shouldn't factor into the equation. How she makes you fucking feel should not factor into the equation. Does this make practical sense for me to elevate her to a role in my life where she's going to be girlfriend or a wife? Does it make sense? Is the value there? Is she an asset to me? It ain't hard, but you got guys out here looking at love like women do. And it ain't nothing but pain for you motherfuckers. I'm out.